All right, Shalom, Shalom. I want to give all praise to Yahweh by Shem Shai. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Israel, you know, GMS. And salutations to the elect brethren out there preaching the word in sincerity and truth, you know, risking their lives and freedom to do so. You know, and that's what I wanted to go into, this, this sacrifice of the, of the elect, you know. And why and why it holds so much substance to Yahweh by Shem Shai. You know, but... You know, with that, I'm going to get straight into it. You know, real quick les lesson, so I'm going to get straight into it. This is Mark chapter 12, verse 41. It says, And Yahweh Shai sat over against the treasury, and behold, how the people cast money into the treasury. And many that were rich cast in much. It says, And there came a certain poor widow, and she threw in two mites, which make a farthing. And he called unto him his disciples and he saith unto them really i say unto you that the this poor widow have cast more in than all they which have cast into the treasury for all they did cast in of their abundance but she of her want did cast in all that she had even all her living you know and even though she only gave two mites, you know, this poor widow, you know, compared to the other people, the, the rich people, they cast in much in abundance. But even though she only cast in two mites, Yahweh Shah said she gave more. Why? Because she, 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 she put her whole life on. She sac basically, she, she sacrificed her life. You know, she gave, it says, what's the point I want to get? Shalaki, one second. Yeah, that's what I wanted to say, Shalaki. Okay? Even though she only put in two mites, you know, why did she give more? Because she gave all that she had. She put her whole heart into that sacrifice, you know? And that's that's what the elect to be uh, compared unto, you know? And that's why, you know, uh, that's why the riches of this world, you know, first of all, the riches of this world is deceitful. And that's why the... Even though the elect doesn't have much, if you was to be compared to the, you know the people, the rich people of this world, they was to you know donate trillions to Yahweh Shai. Who who would who would give more? The people that sacrificed you know all they had, you know they lives, or the people that donated you know trillions plus they got you know even more, you know. It's the elect, you know. They they put their whole life down on the line. Quick precept. This is Romans chapter 12, verse 1. You know, and this is what the elect is doing now in the spirit. You know, it says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of Yahweh, that ye present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto Yahweh by Shem Shai, which is your reasonable service. You know, and that's and that's what Yahweh by Shem Shai requires of us, that we present our bodies a living sacrifice, because that's really the, the only thing you could really do the, you know, not repay your house shy back, but that's the only work that you can do to, to, to show your appreciation, you know, of his sacrifice, because through his sacrifice, you know, it's the reason why, you know, low willing, I be the elect, you know, we potentially uh, be saved, you know, because he's our hope, you know, and it says, that you present your body as a living sacrifice. And, you know, and that's what we're doing right now in the spirit. You know, it's not carnal, you know, even though, you know, in these last days, you know, and Jacob's trouble, you know, some brothers are going to die, you know, but it's more so talking about spiritually right now because the elect is doing what? The elect, the elect gave up. Quick precept, right quick. One second. But this is what the elect did right here. This is Matthew chapter 19, verse 29. It says, Everyone that hath forsaken houses, or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for my name's sake, shall receive a hundredfold and shall inherit everlasting everlasting life. You know, and to be, you know, and to think about it, you know, it says, have forsaken. You know, all those things that the elect sacrificed, you know, the, the heavenly father, you know, he can't personally use that. 
You know, first of all, you know, all these people on the earth is unclean to him. You know, what, what is the heavenly father going to do with a house? You know, he told, uh, he told Solomon that in the, uh, in the book of, in the book of, I think, I believe it was Samuel's, but it's, it referred it back to Acts, you know, uh, I believe it's seven chapter and 45th verse. He said, what house shall you, uh, what house shall you build me? You know, his hands made, uh, the earth, you know, in the, in the heavens and his throne and the earth is his footstool. So what house shall you build him? So what the heavenly father going to do with the house? You know, nothing, but it's, it's the thought that was counts, you know, you know, because like that poor widow did, she put her all into it, you know. She 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 gave everything that she had, the same thing with the elect, you know. And that's why the elect sacrifice is so, it holds so much substance. Because, you know, uh, we, we, we put our all into the sacrifice, you know. But I'm going to read that one more time. It's Matthew chapter 19, verse 29. It says, everyone that hath forsaken houses or brethren or sisters or father or mother or wife, or children, or lands, for my name's sake, shall receive a hundredfold, and shall inherit everlasting life. So the elect, you know, we, we're going to live in it forever, you know, if, uh, you know, Lord willing, I'll be the elect, I don't to the end, you know, likewise to your, to your brothers watching, you know, we, we shall receive everlasting, everlasting life, and a hundredfold to whatever we lost, you know, uh, Last scripture. Like I said, it was just a quick lesson. Real quick. Sloppy. One second. This is the last precept. This is uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 10. This is the point. It says, Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. For there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave, whether thou goest. So just like that poor widow did and uh, Mark the, the, what was that? The 12th chapter, and, uh, 41 through 44, just like how she put all her might uh, into her sacrifice. You know, the same thing we're supposed to do likewise, you know. I have one quick point I want to make. I think I lost it. Shlocky. But I think I touched all the points. I'll read that scripture one more time and I'll close out. It's Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 10. It says, Whether whatsoever thy hand finds to do, do it with all thy might. For there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave. Whether that goes, you know, with that, you know, I say Shalom, you know, all praise to the Hubba Shim Al-Shah, double honors to the apostles and elders of GMS, and salutation to your left brethren out there pushing the words of sincerity and truth, risking your life and freedom to do so. Shalom.